Welcome to the Vineyard Lazy Susan. Um, my goal doing this um, project was to make a Pottery Barn inspired um, high-end um, cask looking top and stencil it as if it was old and all that kind of stuff. Um, in order to do that I needed to use some mediums or some stains or something that were transparent. Um, our regular Deco Art Americana paints are not transparent, generally speaking. And so um, I went and tapped on the Media Fluid Acrylic um, products. So I used, I think, like eight of these to create this um, layered kind of stain look. And I think it turned out just perfectly lovely. You could stop on the little bit more yellow side or deepen it with some reds like I did. You can, like anywhere along the line, um, you can stop and make it fit your stain level, if you will. What I liked about this was I wasn't using a lot of toxic stains like um, like the Minwax brand or whatever where they have all of the petroleum-based um, stuff. This is, you know, just an acrylic base. So anyway, but we've got a new stencil. Um, we've used the banding stencil around the outside edge. Um, I use a T-square and show you how to do that to make the planks straight. And then the transparency of the paint is phenomenal. So I hope you enjoy that. And um, we've got this available for you to watch so you can do this to any wood surface as well. Um, and it's just a really great technique. So I hope you enjoy. All right, today we're going to paint a cask Lazy Susan. The first thing that we need to do is we need to seal our surface because we're gonna do a kind of a staining technique that um, requires just like washes of color and this kind of um, surface will just kind of suck it in and and not allow the colors to sit on top. It'll make them come into the grain. So we're just gonna go ahead and get it sealed and dried. And this is a multi-purpose sealer from DecoArt. All right, I've got my surface dry and I'm gonna use raw sienna. And this is the media acrylic paints um, in raw sienna. These paints have no filler, so when they go, when you put them all over your paints or over your surface, they're gonna actually let whatever's behind it kind of show through. And this is a real benefit when you want a little bit more lustrous looking effect. Now this is going to um, be our very back level of our wood grain. So I wanted it to have just kind of a yellow undertone without screaming too hard and too loud. And I think this might be the wrong one. I'm in the wrong one. Okay, I want to start with transparent yellow oxide. Yeah, that's the right one. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go over the top of it. And this is just a little bit less golden. Actually, I'm not being able to tell the difference between the two of them. I'm wondering if I put out that one and there we go. I put that one out twice. So no worries, I'm going to go ahead and dry it. Well, actually, I'm going to finish what I started. We'll make this be a happy accident. I'll go over the top and deal with it. Because these are transparent, they're going to um, show through one to the other. But if I left this all like this color, it would show. So I, I want to make sure that it's kind of even. And then the whole time I'm doing this, I'm going to try to keep my strokes straight up and down um, as long as my surface doesn't start walking. And the reason for that is I want to um, start creating and building some wood grain. Then we're going to take my rake brush and some raw media fluid acrylic raw umber. And I'm just thinning it with water and we're going to tap it and make the wood grain has um, a lot of little um, nicks and grooves and crannies and stuff like that. And I just want to put that down first so that it gets glazed over instead of just being on top. We'll make it have layers of stuff. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to have to have my handy scraper handy, my paper towel and a big old flat brush and I want to keep this thing straight so I know where I'm going. So I'm going to put on a wash of my paint straight up and down. I'm 
I'm kind of going back across and not letting it dry. Straight up and down, see how I went curvy right there? Don't do that. Straight up and down, straight up and down. I'll come over on this side, don't let it dry. You might need to practice on a little practice sheet there. Okay, and go off your surface. Don't worry about it spattering. Um, I've got to make sure your surface is protected. Okay. I've got a nonstick mat on mine. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the straight side of the handy scraper. And we're going to stop where we want to bring planks. And we're just going to pull it straight on down. And we're going to scrape that paint off. You can leave like a little ridge. It helps if you get kind of over it. I'm going to have to go sideways to see. Oops, don't stop in the same spot. Don't want that. Not the same spot. Keep wanting to do that. And then I'll go the other direction. Got a little wavery there. Okay, so see how this is dry? I'm gonna have to hurry. This is totally dry. And we'll wake it up a little bit. I don't want to put extra coats on it because I don't want it to be um, darker than the others. Okay, so that's our first pass with our wood grain. Looking at it, I've got a curve right here. Straighten that out just a little bit. And then I've got a curve there. Okay, now I'll hit the blow dryer. Alright, so next we're going to go into, that's just kind of an interesting look, isn't it? I'm going to go into a little bit of um, Transparent Red Iron Oxide Plus Burnt Umber, kind of 50-50. And then we want to just do the same thing. I'm just going to wash this right over the top. We want to use our straight lines. Okay, now notice that this side's a little bit more red. That's because my color was more red on it. So I'll put out a little bit more of our stuff, a little bit more water, and then we'll continue. Okay, so that's that coat. So now we've got a couple of layers and we're gonna have some fun. Okay, now we need to give it some wood grain details. So what I'm gonna do is use my round brush and I'm going to use raw umber, lamp black, and burnt umber. And I'm just going to, the raw umber ones will sit still in the background. Um, the burnt umber, the black ones will um, stand out the most. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put some knots. So we're going to put the middle thingy bobber, whatever that thing's called, in the middle of the knot. And then we're going to chase outside and around it and give ourselves some wood grain. Okay, then we go in and we could deepen that with a little, oh hi, that was like a lot of lamp black. All right, well, that one's going to be a, a shocker. And so we can give this just a little bit of extra and we're going to cover over the top, but now I can go into my brown 
and I can, you don't want to make this too busy, and take your time. I've, I'm going to say that I've had experience, and then by the time I'm done, I'll probably hate what I did, but um, I've definitely painted some wood grain before, so definitely don't get too busy, and don't go too fast if you don't feel comfortable. Okay, so that's the one I just added, and then we need to stagger them, and then I'm looking, I'm looking at a, an example. Um, there's this thing that's coming off over here that's got like a couple of grains all following each other. So we can have some of that. And we can go in and we can darken it. And we can have it stay light on the inside. To read your board. And I'm sure I'm not doing this according to what kind of tree wood I have, but I don't care about that. Shake my hand just a little bit just to see if. It makes me like it a little bit more natural. Oops, sorry. Don't make everything the same size either. I have a tendency to get all like in a row in a row and And then I'm noticing all my knots are on the same side, so we need to do a couple of somethings over someplace else. And then some of these boards could maybe be messed up a little bit. I know they're joined and stuff, but maybe they've got a like a wood grain that's falling apart or something like it's really old wood. I love the transparency of these paints. I like that I can still see my spots. Maybe we'll go right in the middle of this one. Then we can have a couple of fairly significant things that we can we'll be able to cover over deep in this guy right here. I'll just pat him down just a little bit, deep in this guy. And then Okay, so there's our different grains. All right, so I'm just gonna take some umber and I'm gonna give myself, let's see, I like that line. I'll give myself a line down. And then I'm gonna give myself that same line, checking for evenness. But my board ends over here, so I'm gonna slide this over and then I'm gonna make sure I just have enough of the same spacing. Okay, and I've got that line. And I'll just get myself, this one ends over here. I know I did something funny over there. They don't need to be evenly spaced because I don't think that that's how old wood would be. I'm just using burnt umber. Flip it around. 
and hopefully I can still see my lines. So this one can slide over. I have a line. This is me pondering. This is my pondering voice. Okay, so I'll just continue this. I feel like now I'm getting boring. Continue this down along the line. All right, so now I've got a little bit of black mixed in with my burnt umber and water. I'm gonna go back down along. And just kind of add black here and there. And that's gonna give it a crisper line. I can tell where my line is which is why I'm going back with black. <laughs> I'm just, seriously, where's my line? I'll make that be the line, how about that? back with a little bit more black and hit it just here and there. Kind of a skip line. Okay, eyeball it. Eyeball it and call it. So it's getting way plankier, isn't it? And now with a little bit more black, I'm gonna go through and add a little bit of fatter, little just like gaps and things. And I don't want them in a row separated out at the edge, but I do want here and there. If I've got anything looking a little too neat and tidy, like down here, it's time to make that into a little gap. You're gonna have contrast. The contrast is what's gonna give you the look of um, like a trompe l'oeil almost, like it is chipped and cracked and stained and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, I'm doing it the same and I'm not supposed to be our and distressed cracks like it's been dried and polished and don't make them all the same length don't make them all the same everything um, side. That's looking so cool, isn't it? Oh, I love doing this kind of stuff. Like I said, not too many. Now with the very tip of my brush, and I've got a very nice round brush. It has a really fine point. You can use a Raphael um, if you've got it. You just want to be dancing right on the tippy top of the toe of your brush. And I'm just going in and adding super fine grain detail. Just a little bit more detail than is there just from my brush scratches and strokes. 
Don't make everything too curly. I'm doing a little bit too much curling. But don't make it straight either. And if you do one that follows something, make some other things follow something. Okay, I'm going to get out of this before I do too much. Probably about there right now. So that's where I'm at. And now we're going to do the piece de resistance. We're going to sand. And um, we're going to try sanding. This is super rough. This is like 60 grit sandpaper. And we're going to try sanding. We're going to sand straight in a line. And we want to relieve some of the base from this light wood. And we don't want to do it everywhere. Um, so we're just going to see what we see. And we want the scratches. So see, that's leaving me some light areas that's going to look like wear. Okay, now I'm not done, so don't, don't panic. Try not to sand through your knots. Sanding in a straight line is going to be your most important thing because those lines are going to help make grain and add another dimension. stuff here. Now we're going to go back a step to our yeah, transparent yellow uh, oxide, iron oxide. And we're going to go back over the top of our scratches and let that soak into where the scratches are. So now what that's done is it's yellowed it up a little bit for me. It's looking a little bit orange. Now it's looking a little bit yellow, but I've got a plan. Okay, so now we're going to go burnt umber. I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing. Um, I think we'll have our transparent oxide out. I've got a wet brush, but I'm going to be dry brushing in from the edge. Okay, so I'm just loading the tip of my brush, blotting it on the paper towel. Just bringing that in just a little bit. Now we're going to sand a little bit to get rid of a little bit of this like edge stuff that we got going on here. This um, that where the brush strokes are like stopping. And then we want to bring some in a little bit further than others. Whoops, sorry. Straight on in.
and then a lot on the edges. Okay, and we can wipe that. This is settling down nicely. Got a little bit of water on there. Just to settle it in. Okay, I'm gonna give it some drying. All right, anywhere where you have something that's really just not blending, give it a couple scratches. A couple of scratches will blend it in and add another layer. Okay, now we're gonna get dangerous and we're gonna go into black, or at least black plus something, black plus brown, I think. Not quite dead black, but, all right, and this is gonna to need to be really straight and it's not gonna be everywhere. And then I'm probably gonna want, let's sand through the wet. Kind of pulls it in a little bit. Kind of gives it that aged. All right, what are we thinking about that? Wonk. I think one of the most important things is not to take your brush off once you start making a line. I need this one to come in just a little bit further. So that's looking a little bit weathered and stuff. I'm wanting the brush to just kind of speak. And so look at the difference between that and that. Pretty neat. I like it. Okay, I'm out of paints. So I'm just going to continue and do this. Um, on the other side as well. All right, now I'm going to go into my black with water, so 50-50, and I'm going to spatter. I'm spattering everything right now is what I'm doing. I'm going to stand up and get away from it. I'm spattering up, down, backwards, forwards, more at the edges. Okay, and we'll get those dots dry. All right, now I'm roughing up just a little bit more here and there, just to balance it out. I don't want it to, I'm looking at balance. Okay, I'm loving how this is turning out. All right, we need a little bit of red in there. I'm gonna mix my red and my, my red is transparent red iron oxide. And I'm mixing it with the burnt umber. Get a little bit of red streaking here and there. Don't want to end up with red wood, though, so I'm going to be cautious with it. And now I think I can go back into my black just a little bit with water. Don't want to do the black without like some serious water going on. And mix that in with the red and the scratches. See, that's, that's going to make that nice. Look at that. Made it like rough old wood. Ooh, hi. And that's what happens. You base coat. And that's too much. So we'll go sandpaper. And that's what I just did. Straight lines. 
and you can streak through the middle of it. Now I'm not doing a base coat, you can see. I'm just bringing a little bit of that warmth in. All right, I think I've got it about as dark as I should. Got it about as warm as I should, I think, and I think we're gonna stop right there. All right, to stencil, I've got this lined up. Just gonna go in with black, and I wanna pounce it off on, I'm gonna load in the middle, pounce it three times at least, sometimes five. If you don't pounce, it will bleed. So you definitely always, always, always want to pounce. I want this to be a fairly clean stencil, so I'm not going to scumble it. I'm going to base coat it by stippling, which is what I'm doing now. And I'll get all of the letters done, and then I'm gonna sand through them after I get them done. Probably take two coats. So I'll just do it lightly once, and then repeat it again. Okay, ta-da. So you could leave it like this, or you can put our grapes up there, whichever way you wanna do. Um, one of the things that I find with um, stenciling is it always looks better if you do a little bit of sanding through it. So it always seems scary to do. And be careful not to do it so that you, because it's taking off the stain, make sure that you make your strokes irregular. Just wanna sand into that paint just a little bit, just to make it look as if it's joined with the background. aggressively depending on what I'm doing. Okay, I'm getting a little aggressive and I'm going a little sideways, straight up and down. Change boards when you change. You definitely want to go straight up and down. That was bad. To fix it now. Okay. And I can flip it over. So that just looks cool, doesn't it? Okay. Boy, I sure like that. Awesome sauce. See how my knot is standing out darker than my letters though? I'm just gonna give that a little sand and it'll be like distressed wood. Okay, and I can go back over with one more thin, thin, thin wash, burnt umber. and we'll get it dry. All right, I was gonna paint grapes with color on here, but I think in keeping with kind of the the, the on trend <clears throat> cask um, Lazy Susans, they're generally not colorful, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make this black grapes using my grape stencil. So if you were doing this with color, what you would do is you would use these layers to form all your grapes and you would just scumble your color in. So there's my grapes. And then it's got a leaf piece as well. And then I'll just have that be my leaves. I really love how this wood grain turned out. And I think it's pretty simple once you have the steps. All right, so there we have grapes and leaves. And then for my last piece, what I wanna do is I wanna use a banding stencil. One thing that's super interesting is trying to band around a um, circle um, is one of the most impossible things I've ever done in all of my painting career. 
So we came up with these banding stencils, um, and there's an A and a B. This one is an A, and that's the even number. So it's 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and like that. So what happens, and then the other thing that's kind of cool about it is you can, this started out for clocks, so you can put this in the middle um, of your clock, and then you can put a pencil or a marking tool there, whoops, and then put your um, lead in any one of those holes and make other bands um, if you need something that's in between. So it will mark for you as well. But um, this one, we find the one that, this is a 16 inch circle. And so then I just line up my 16 to the edge and go at my banding. Super simple. And there's different sizes. There's eighth inch, half inch, that kind of stuff. And then as you go, you lift it up and you just rotate it around. And so then I'll just work my way around my cask and I'll meet you when I'm finished. All right, I'm going to just glue this um, Lazy Susan base. Oops, I'm going to put a hole. Oopsie. Get it together here. I'm going to just glue this to the bottom of my panel. This one's going to be a permanent Lazy Susan. I've got a whole series of them that are um, reversible, but I didn't want any center um, nugget on this one. All right. So I've got my goop, and then on the back of your Lazy Susan, there's an etched line so that you can line it up. So we just slide that puppy over and let it dry. And there's our Lazy Susan.